Hi, I'm Judith from Just You Designs and this is my tutorial on how to make this scrappy table topper. And if I slide it out underneath this tray, you can get a better view of it. So um, I dipped into my scraps basket once again into my tilde scraps to make this and what we're making here are stacked coin columns and it's a simple quilted table topper just to place underneath my tray to protect my table and what I'll be showing you is how to make the stack coins, how to quilt it and also how to finish it with machine binding all the way around it. So let's get sewing. So to make our columns, um, they're called stack coins, um, our strips, columns of strips from our scraps basket. A um, little bit of preparation involved. First of all, you want to iron your strips and then make sure that they've all got um, parallel sides, so they're the same width running the whole way along. And I just been grabbing strips out of my tilde scraps basket here and laying them out in a pleasing order. Um, if you're working to a set measurement, you'll obviously need a lot more than you think because of the seam allowances which get absorbed, but you can sew and measure as you work along your column. Um, try and finish on a biggish piece because if you're slightly over your required length, say half an inch, then you've made allowances to take that off at the end without having to disturb the order of the column. So you can see I have lined, um, roughly lined them all up at one edge and that's the edge that I'm going to be sewing, start my sewing from. I'm going to be using a quarter inch seam. So you either want to put your quarter inch foot in or move your needle over to the quarter inch position. And I'll be sewing from the same end all the way along. Don't worry about these ones being longer than what you need. I don't trim anything down to size. Obviously the shortest piece is going to dictate the final width of your column um, but all of these extra bits are going to be usable in the um, for the second column that we're going to be making once we have these sewn together and ironed and trimmed all of these bits we trim off we'll use again so it's more accurate if you don't trim them to size because your line here might go slightly off when you're sewing them all together and then you end up with an even um, narrower column than what you wanted. So we're going to sew all of these together using a quarter inch seam and then we'll press all of our seams going in the one direction and get it nice and flat. So here we have our strips all sewn together and I have pressed them all the seams going in the one direction and I'm going to trim it now. I'm going to check the bottom edge here, this right angle, put it on a line on the mat and then I have run off very slightly there so we need to straighten up this edge here first and then we'll move our ruler to our narrowest piece of fabric which is this one and obviously if you're wanting to cut a set width like a four inch column or a five inch column then you will have made sure that your um, smallest strip was already a little bit over that measurement. I'm getting four and three quarters here and there's our column and you get lovely parallel neat straight sides and the little bits that are left over the longer ones I will reuse again for another column some of them might be a little bit short but you can see here on these ones, 
I have done a variety of widths. I've got a really wide one there, medium size one, and then a skinny one. And the skinny ones are great for using up all those um, little smaller leftover pieces. So that's how you make stack, scrappy stack coin columns. You make them whatever length and whatever width you want. And then it's about assembling it together into our table topper. So here we have um, the stack coins that I have used in my table topper. I've got two five inch ones, two three and a half inch ones, and then a skinny two and a half inch one wide in the middle. And they're all 12 inches in height. And this is where I'm going to put a plain strip. This is Kona bone. And I'm going to put that in between all of my uh, columns using a quarter inch seam. I'm going to iron the seams away from the Kona bone um, or open depending on how much resistance I get from the seams but I don't want all those colours coming into the lightest fabric. So you can see here I have put all my Kona bone strips in between my columns. This is the size that I want my um, table topper to be. Um, you can obviously go for any size you want. I've given it a good press. Um, I actually ended up pressing my seams open in the end just because there was quite a lot of bulk there so it's laying nice and flat. Um, what I've also done is I've spray basted it, um, the top onto some wadding and also some backing fabric onto the wadding as well. So my three layers are spray basted and they're nice and secure ready for quilting. Now I'm going to quilt in a diagonal grid. I'm going to show you an example of another map that I've done a couple of years ago. And you can see that this one, um, the quilting is really pronounced in this one. Um, and that's because the type of wadding I used in this one is called um, insulating polyester wadding, otherwise known as oven glove wadding. So it's really dense um, wadding that um, helps to reduce transfer of heat between the layers. So it's great for oven gloves and ironing board covers. But I also like it for um, some of my mats because it gives a nice dense um, quilted look as well as protecting the table that it's on. It's not the wadding I've used in this one, I'm just using normal wadding, but I really love how it shows up the one and a half inch diagonal grid and that's what I'm going to quilt onto this one. So to do that um, I'm going to start just by chalking on one line only. I'm going to sew that one line and then I'm going to put my quilting bar on and I'm going to show you how to quilt using a quilting bar. So I'm going to use the 45 degree line on my ruler here and I'm putting it on the left hand edge of uh, my left column here and I'm just going up to the corner and I'm going to chalk on my first line. I quite like the um, the chalk pen with the refillable chalk. Don't ever use Frixian pen on the right side of your fabric. Um, the alternative is a blue water soluble pen which would work equally as well and you spray it off with water at the end. So that's my first line marked on. I'm going to sew that now. Um, I'm going to increase my stitch length as you normally do with quilting um, and you would have a size 90 standard needle in your machine. There we are. So that's my first line. Um, we're still adhering to the quilting rules of working from the middle out. So I'm going to continue sewing this section and then that section before I will do the diagonals going the other way. But um, I want to show you instead of um, marking every single line on this piece, um, I want to show you how to use the quilting bar. So this is my quilting bar. This is a standard size quilting bar which is two and a half inches wide. Um, quite often you get them with quilt, uh, walking feet. Um, if you don't have a faff and you've bought a separate walking foot sometimes you get a quilting bar with it. And what this means is I can put this into my machine 
in distances from the needle up to two and a half inches and if I track the first line of stitching that I've done my needle which will be here will sew exactly parallel to the first line of stitching. So I want to do one and a half inch wide um, grid so I'm going to position this into my machine so that the needle is one and a half inches away from this and that's the bit that I would then um, use as my guide. So to put the quilting bar into a faff there's a little hole just here and there's a screw above it. Um, it's also the same hole that you use to put in your um, free motion quilting foot so I'm just going to loosen the screw and I put the quilting bar into the hole and we can slide it about and measure the distance from here to the needle. If you don't have a faff um, you may need to use your um, walking foot which will have a slot in the back of it for the quilting bar. Um, so what I'm going to do is measure the distance from the needle here to the edge of my quilting bar and I want one and a half inches which is about there. I hold that steady while I tighten the screw and even though that's really tight you'll still be able to move the bar up and down. Now to start off with I'm quilting the right hand side of my piece which means I'm going to have the quilting bar first onto the left but to do the other side you'll have to position the bar on this side it will look a little bit upside down but it still works but it means we're not breaking the quilting rules of turning our piece round and sewing down one from one edge and then sewing up the other edge because that will cause the fabric to twist a little bit. So that's my quilting bar in. I can move it up to get the fabric in under the machine. And I bring it down my needle up onto the first line of stitching there. Now my eye is not going to be focused on my needle, my eye is going to be focused on the quilting bar as I follow that the whole way down and quilt a parallel line of stitching beside it. And there we go, that's our first two lines done and I'm going to continue um, with the next line, the next one, every one and a half inches using my quilting bar until this side is completely covered. Then I'm going to do this side. What I don't want to do is to turn this round. I'm going to move my quilting bar over to the right hand side, measure one and a half inches and then I'll be able to put the piece in this way and follow this line and quilt this side. Here you can see I have moved the quilting bar over to the left hand side. It looks like it's upside down but what you're using this time is the bend, the little elbow and that goes down onto your stitches and you use it as your guide to track along the line of stitching. I've quilted all the lines now going in this direction and you may be able to see I've already um, actually started quilting the lines going in the opposite direction so I'm just going to show you how to mark this up. Whenever we put the 45 degree ruler on this edge to mark the lines going this way it's the same technique except we need to turn this 90 degrees and then we want to use this edge to put our um, 45 degree line on the ruler and again I like to start at a corner so I'm putting this on the edge of the fabric now when you're doing your cross lines um, there's an extra thing that you have to check so not only are you getting your 45 degree line um, here you also look at the previous stitching lines that you've done and they need to be in line with the horizontal lines of your ruler and that will make sure that you're getting right angle intersections and that you'll end up with little squares rather than diamonds if you go off a little bit at an angle you'll end up with um, diamonds and they may not all be even so I'm not only checking here my 45 degree line there I'm also checking every one and a half inch 
that the um, previous stitching lines are aligned with one and a half inch lines on my ruler and they look great. And what I did was I chopped here, took it to the machine and my quilting bar was still in the right hand position. So I'm actually going to be quilting this side first. So I started um, tracking, stitched the first line, tracked that one and stitched here. And that's um, working to this side first. Then I'll flip the bar around to the left hand side of the machine to finish off this section. To finish quilting the last section of the table topper I need to move my quilting bar back over to the left hand position and I need to measure again from the needle to the edge of the bar one and a half inches and then I can finish the last corner of the table topper. There we have our fully quilted table topper. You can see the quilted grid nicely on the back. So all that's left to do now is to trim away all the excess wadding and backing fabric. There we are. All nicely trimmed and quilted. So all that's left to do is to bind it. If you wanted to curve your corners a little bit, like on the previous mat I showed you, you would just simply find a little cup or a saucer, um, place it so that the edge of the saucer meets both sides and you draw the curve and then you would cut that curve out and then you bind it in exactly the same way you're not putting bias binding or anything on this this is just straight cut binding quilt binding so that's what we're going to do next from the width of a fat quarter you want to cut four two and a half inch strips to make the binding for this size of a table runner Now you're going to join the strips together at the shore ends. So take two pieces, place them right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam across. Take another strip and join it to the end of the first set. And attach the remaining strip in the same way. Now press all of those seams open and press the whole length of binding in half wrong sides together along the length. I've left a piece of uh, binding free here. Um, don't start sewing from the start. And I'm using a generous quarter inch seam because I'm going to machine stitch it down again on the back. You don't pin your binding on in advance, so I'm going to show you how we turn the corner. You come down almost to the edge of the table topper, but we're going to stop a quarter inch short. Lift your press foot up and turn the piece this way, and you want your binding to be horizontal now. You can snip the thread here if you want to. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take this piece of binding and flip it up towards the needle. And what you want to look at is a straight line. Hope you can see that. 
a straight line here running level with the edge of the quilted piece. That will create your 45 degree mitre. Don't try and create the fold here, uh, you'll be all over the place. So a wee tip is to push the binding up towards the needle. Imagine a ruler running along here, lining that piece up with this piece and that creates your 45 degree mitre. So hold on to that, then bring the binding back down on top of it and you want your binding to be level with this edge and also with this edge and then you can put it back onto the machine and start sewing again right from the very top edge and carry on down to the next corner I've increased my stitch length here to uh, three three and a half because you're going to be going through all the wadding as well Now when you've done all four corners and you're starting to approach the um, place where you started you want to leave yourself a good five inch gap there for the join of the ends so I'm just going to take it out of my machine now and I'm going to show you how to join the binding strips together. To join the two pieces of binding together you need the edge of the first piece of binding, the piece you started with, the end of it needs to be within the gap that you've left here. So I'm actually just going to snip that there. And that means the end of that is within my gap. So that's, that's lying nice and flat. The bit that we finished sewing on, the, the bit of binding comes over the top of the first piece. And you want to be able to see the um, bit of the starting piece of binding just there. I don't know if you can see that. So I've just overlapped them but left a little bit of the underneath one showing. And um, we're going to measure from that point out over the top of this piece a half an inch. So the half inch mark of the little ruler goes on the underneath, the edge of the underneath one and I'm marking half an inch out this way on the top piece of binding and that's where I cut just through the top piece only. And now we will have exactly a half an inch overlap here. Now what we're going to do is open these two out and put them right sides together and I'll put a little pin in that to hold it and we're going to sew this edge with a quarter inch seam and finger press the seam open. So you can see here where I've joined the two pieces of binding and finger press that little seam open and when I return that um, piece of binding it now fits exactly um, the remaining piece that I need to sew. So I'm going to put it back under the machine few stitches back and finish a few stitches beyond where I started. And there we have our binding on the whole way around. I'm going to iron the binding up. Don't worry too much about the corners but I'm going to iron it up this way so that I can get the full extension to wrap the binding the whole way around to the back and then I'm going to show you how to machine stitch it down from the front. That's my binding all nicely ironed up out of the way. So we want to pull the corners over and what we want to do is we want to fold the binding over to the back side making sure that the this line of stitching, can you see that? This line of stitching here is hidden by the binding but we're actually going to pin it from the front and this is called a ditch here this bit here is called the ditch and you want to put a pin in the ditch and check the back and if you've caught it in at the back as long as you sew where you've pinned you'll catch the binding in at the back so you want to pin 
at intervals the whole way around your binding. When it comes to a corner, you're pushing the this side flat and then this side comes down on top of it until you get this neat little miter and that should mirror the miter fold, little neat tidy fold on the front there. So again you want to pin into the corner so that that doesn't move. And just check that it's all nicely caught in there. So carry on around the whole piece and then we'll take it to the machine. If you have a stitch in the ditch foot, um, which has got a little metal guide running in the middle of the foot, then it's really useful for um, sewing the binding down here because we're actually going to be stitching in the ditch. If you don't have um, a stitch in the ditch foot, don't worry. Just use your standard foot and make sure that your needle is right in the centre position of it and you will just be needing to keep your eye on the needle that it's running in the ditch. If you have a ditch foot you don't keep your eye on the needle, you keep your eye on the little guide that's right in front of the needle and make sure that it stays in the ditch. And again I'm going to keep my pins in until the last minute to take them out so that I know that when I'm sewing where I have pinned um, I will catch the binding in at the back. Again, your stitch length should be up at around three, three and a half, because we're going through all the wadding and all the layers here. It's a good idea to stop every so often and check that you are actually catching the binding in at the back, as you can see there. And you want to come down to the corner and leave your needle down in the fabric, turn so you're pivoting with the needle down in. Make sure your needle's just out at the last minute and continue to sew. And there we have our binding all attached nice and neatly onto the back. Everything's caught in and it looks nice and neat from the front as well. And that's it finished. I hope you had fun with my tutorial. If you'd like lots more inspiration, free tutorials, patterns and classes, do check out my website. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook.